Hi, welcome back to Studio Dasi. Today we're going to be making our portfolios. So the first thing we're going to do is set a deadline. Yes, we love a deadline. So Sasha, my partner, came up with this brilliant kind of idea. Um, following the strategy we spoke about last week was that it's the deadline needs to be kind of an eight week deadline, all encompassing. So four weeks to make your portfolio and then four weeks to do your kind of branding marketing strategy. What's great about that is it just kind of gives you a deadline. Obviously, it means you're not going to drag it on forever. And it also gives you an idea of this proof of concept happens quite quickly. You're not spending all your time and resources dragging on for like a year. You kind of get it done quickly and then you know if people are going to receive it or not. And if it doesn't work, you can kind of start the process again. So what we also want to do is focus on what we're good at. We're not trying to learn a new skill now. This is something that like we've been maybe working on or tinkering with for a while. It's work that we want to try sort of start making and making money off. And so this is kind of taking all our skills and putting it into these few key pieces that are going to showcase our skill and our creativity. And the last thing I would suggest in kind of this pre-planning time is looking at um, maybe two values of work, maybe making two pieces that are higher price, just more production and maybe take a bit more time. And then two pieces that are of lower value, a little bit more affordable for a client and that are just as brilliant, but don't take as much of your time and can be offered as an ulterior, an ulterior, an alternative option. So this is the fun part. It's the research. So if I go onto my Pinterest and I go to look at all my saved boards and the first board here, all pins. And if I just take a look through all of these, I kind of scroll through, it gives me a really good sense of what I gravitate towards. Um, and there are a few things that I think we can look at, um, some kind of categories we can look at and start taking notes of our own interests and what we gravitate towards, because I think that'll give us a good idea of the kind of work we want to be making. The first thing to look at, I guess, is subject matter. So I think in terms of subject matter, it's kind of hard to say what I gravitate towards, but it's definitely more of the natural world. Uh, very little in terms of people, like even when I look at illustrations, it's not always people. I, I think humans <laughs> just aren't really an interesting subject matter to me in terms of drawing or illustrating or even animating. I, I tend to gravitate towards more natural things like plants and animals. And next we're going to look at color. So again, looking at my pins here, I can see I love color. Uh, not a lot of white actually, which is really funny because it's always like you don't know yourself until you, you know, are shown a mirror of <laughs> what you like. Um, I like some muted tones, but then also some bold colors. So I'm a bit contradictory, but that's fine. And then looking at form, um, this I just know about myself. I love organic shapes, just kind of don't gravitate towards hard lines at all. Um, very feminine movement shapes. Uh, yep, yeah, that's an easy one for me. Medium, uh, I guess Pinterest is a hard one to look at because it's going from my home styles to, you know, stationery and yeah, they obviously work in all different mediums, but I generally do like texture. Um, I like layered things. I, I love texture. I love to kind of either see the paint or the fabric. Um, so I like to be able even like oil color. There's certain textures that I really gravitate towards and I think um, that's important for me to note. Okay, next on the list is niche because we spoke about last week having a niche and how that can really help. I, I'd say this is a really difficult one and this is something I guess I'm also struggling with a bit is where where's a niche that I can kind of work in. You know I, I would have said maybe sort of eight years ago or seven years ago when we started that Lyric videos were a niche for motion design because not a lot of people were doing them, but now it just doesn't seem so niche anymore and there's a lot of competition. So 
I think within that is trying to find a niche as well. And I think me using sort of more texture, cutout feeling, um, fabrics, just a more handmade feel animation is something that will I, I find just not super common in the music industry. There's a lot of digital uh, 3D motion. Um, obviously people are making incredible things with 3D and incorporating texture and fabrication and all of that amazing stuff. But realistically it's what I can do and what I can achieve and um, what I can offer clients within a budget that they can achieve. So I think that is kind of the direction I'm falling in a little bit and it's also something I've worked with before in terms of the form. Um, I've done previous videos where people really relate to this kind of cut out paper feel of motion design um, and I think I'm gonna kind of lean into that. So yeah, that's kind of the niche aspect covered and you know, also just like the themes are very light. There's nothing deep here, there's nothing dark, uh, there's nothing making you think deeply. It's just happy color, make you happy and maybe make you laugh. So that is me. And well, that's my Pinterest. So yeah, that's interesting to know. And then the last thing I wanted to kind of make as a point on this research phase is also take note of what you aren't so great at, what your weaknesses are in your work and just write them down. Something I really struggle with is uh, composition. Um, that's something I've been trying to focus on and get better at, but it's definitely not something that comes naturally to me. And I think when we are creative and there are things that do come naturally, I think we tend to just fly by the seat of our pants, make the stuff, and then later look at it and kind of see mm, something's not quite right. I think just part of that pre-planning, take a little bit more effort to think about the final piece before you dive in. Okay, now we're making things. <laughs> One of my big tips I would suggest is not buying any new materials. The reason being is if you don't have the materials already, you're probably not super practiced in them. You know, you are not wanting to make this portfolio making time uh, a time of experimentation. Sure, you can experiment a little bit per project, but it's not all of a sudden, you know, you've always been painting in gouache and now you want to try oil. That's not what we're doing here. We are kind of sticking with what we know in terms of materials, but we're just kind of pushing ourselves to make some great pieces with all the skills and knowledge and pre-planning that we have. The other two reasons for not buying new materials is that just we don't want to spend money. <laughs> Plain and simple. Like a really good example is I've been making these uh, material stop motions right out of like actual fabric and before I started I was kind of browsing Etsy to find like packs of scrap material that I could use in colors and stuff and I was thinking oh I'm gonna have to buy this bundle and that bundle and it all adds up and um, what it forced me to do was just get a little bit more creative and that's what limitations will do is they'll force you to be more creative and maybe get you to do something you wouldn't have done and that maybe other people aren't doing. On the other hand I also found some of the limitations with that uh, were kind of steering me away from maybe creating too much so I'm glad I didn't spend a lot of money buying all these materials that maybe I'm not going to use as much as I thought. Okay and then this is a bit of a side note it's not really part of the strategy um, and that's documentation. If you are wanting to incorporate social media into your strategy that's perfectly fine and I think it's great if it's something you want to invest your time in um, I think in the long run it can be super beneficial for your creative business but it does take time and energy and it will slow this process down. The strategy that we're talking about doesn't really include posting social media content, creating social media content all the time. This is purely just making a portfolio. For now we are just going to document our work in terms of final photos of the things we've made. <laughs> okay and then the final thing is just finishing, finish the projects. Every week I think once you've kind of wrapped 
the project, um, you feel like it's kind of got to the point that you are happy with it, spend an extra couple hours just making it a little bit better if you can. Just really polish it, finish it off, maybe have somebody else look at it, give it a bit of criticism and um, see if you can just improve it a little. Fresh eyes is yeah invaluable so if you have a very um, wonderful partner like I do who knows how to give you feedback without hurting your feelings <laughs> go to them and um, yeah and get some feedback and just give it that little extra something that you can feel proud make sure it's beautifully photographed finished nicely if the colors need to be corrected on Photoshop or whatever or Canva, or whatever editing tools, do that. Just make it look amazing. And um, yeah, well, we all have a portfolio to make, so let's get busy and I will see you guys soon. Bye.